It is 8 million years ago, over the lands that will one day be Argentina, a land currently dominated by large stretches of grassland. Down by one of the waterholes, a young Toxodon has been killed by predators, and though its killers are gone, a scavenger is still at the carcass. A Thylacosmilus is currently feeding on the long intestines of the dead herbivore. He may look like a saber-toothed cat, but he is actually a marsupial that has evolved similar teeth to their placental cousins through convergent evolution. This male tracked down the carcass for over an hour, but he has barely had time to dig in when a massive shadow briefly passes over his head. Looking up and squinting against the harsh sunlight, the carnivorous marsupial knew exactly what was coming. With a wingspan that large, it couldn't be anything else. Soaring in on the wind, its vast six-meter wings block out the sun. This is Argentavis, the heaviest flying bird ever to have lived. Not since the pterosaurs ruled the skies have creatures of such size flown over the earth. Built with the terrifying traits of both eagles and condors, they instill fear on most animals that ever catch a glimpse of them. Circling the carcass briefly, the huge bird descends and comes in for a landing. With such large wings, it would be next to impossible for him to land in dense forests. But the open grasslands are the ideal habitat for him to find prey, whether it be dead or alive. As he comes in about 20 meters away from the kill, he flaps his wings briefly to slow himself, and as he does, the grass parts from the wind he generates in his wake. Even as he lands on his powerful legs, his wings remain outstretched, flattening a wide stretch of flora. Finally coming to a halt, the Argentavis carefully folds in his wings and stood upright. He stands 1.8 meters tall and weighs 72 kilos, making him the size of a human. He begins to walk forward, holding himself up high taking confident strides towards his next meal. He saw everything that was around this area for kilometers while airborne, and knows there isn't anything close by that could threaten him. The Thylacosmilus faces down the approaching avian, and snarls baring his teeth, trying to intimidate the usurper that wants this kill. The Argentavis doesn't break his stride. He has dealt with these scavengers before, and knows they usually run when faced with a larger competitor. Standing his ground, the Phylacosmilus barks in defiance, but backs up as the huge bird begins to tower over him. In the end, the Argentavis does a mock peck at the mammal, as finally the scared marsupial turns tail and runs for cover. He'll have to wait for the new owner of the carcass to leave. Uncontested, the Argentavis begins ripping the dead Toxodon apart with his sharp beak, using his strong legs to hold the body in place. Despite appearing much like an enormous condor, these birds often hunt prey more than scavenging, and will take just about anything from nodo ungulates to capybara, and even armadillos. They can even digest bone, as they have strong digestive acids similar to the modern bearded vulture. Of course, a free meal out in the open is a magnet to any Argentavis soaring high in the sky, and they have territories up to 500 square kilometers. Sure enough, as the male rips apart the carcass, another shadow briefly blocks out the sun, and then a second Argentavis descends to the earth, landing not far from the feeding male. This one is a female, and as she approaches, the male doesn't try to fend her off, or stop her from feeding. There is plenty of meat here, so no need for squabbling. They are not a mated pair. The male's partner is likely hundreds of kilometers away, as both aren't just trying to feed themselves, but their single infant. This chick is safe in her nest on the mountainside, patiently waiting for her parents to return with food. She will remain in the nest for over a year. The female who just started to feed on the carcass has barely started, when the two giant birds are interrupted by the original predators that killed the young Toxodon. 
Moving in a long, lean legs, standing almost three meters tall, is another species of bird, but these are purely terrestrial. The two Argentavis are approached by three terror birds, some of the top predators on the continent. They let out shrill cries as they approach to scare the Argentavis, and they in turn shriek back. The female even opens up her wings to make herself look larger, and as they spread out over five meters, it's an intimidating sight. But the three terror birds barely slow down. It is obvious who truly rules the roost here. Having had enough to eat, the male takes off, launching with his legs and flapping briefly to get enough elevation before he is effortlessly flying over the grassland once again. The female soon follows, taken to the air, but she begins to circle the area, patient enough to wait for the terror birds to finish so she can return. The male begins a long journey back to his nest. He had taken enough to fill his stomach and had plenty left for his growing chick. They would both be well fed this day. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the heaviest flying bird to ever live, Argentavis. The first remains of Argentavis were discovered in the 1970s during expeditions in Argentina, with the first remains being a fragmentary skeleton. These were enough to name the genus Argentavis magnificens in 1980. Since then, only a few pieces of other individuals have been found. It lived during the late Miocene, between 9 and 6 million years ago, and being fully capable of flight, may have lived across South America, and maybe even beyond it. Argentavis belonged to a now extinct family of large birds, called the Teratornithidae, also called teratorns, that are closely related to modern condors and New World vultures. More on this family later. In life, Argentavis would have stood between 1.5 to 1.8 meters tall, and weighed between 60 and 80 kilograms, making it similar in size to an average human. From beak tip to tail tip, it would have been 3.5 meters long. Its wingspan was originally calculated to have gotten to 8 meters across, however more recent studies have put its wingspan at between 5 and 6.5 meters making it well over double the size of the largest modern flying bird, the wandering albatross. Because of this, Argentavis is often called the largest volant bird to have ever lived. Now in terms of weight, which is how we define the size of an animal, it is. In terms of wingspan, however, there is one species that is larger, that being Pelagornis sanderi, which itself looks a lot like an albatross and has an estimated wingspan between 7 and 7.4 meters. Don't worry, I'll be covering Pelagornis at a later date. So while not having the largest wingspan, Argentavis is still the largest known flying bird. At first glance, one couldn't be blamed for thinking Argentavis was basically a massive condor, but there are a few details about its anatomy to suggest it both looked and behaved quite differently. As we can see, this is the skull of a condor, and this is the skull of a teratorn, which is taller, broader, and capable of a much wider gape, making it more similar to an eagle's skull. Their legs are also longer and stronger than their modern relatives, being better suited for attacking live prey. These features have led scientists to believe that Argentavis and other teratorns were more active predators than condors or New World vultures, which are almost exclusively scavengers. Because of this, it is now more favorable to depict Argentavis with a full head of feathers than the naked head, which is often what you see it with. With all that being said, Argentavis and other teratorns do have some features that point at them still being well suited for scavenging. Their skulls are longer than an average predatory raptor's, which would be better suited for plunging into carcasses. They also have smaller and more sideways facing orbits, which give the animal a better field of vision, better to pick out targets from a distance or from a greater elevation, while species like hawks and eagles 
have more forward-facing orbits to have better accuracy while attacking up close. So Argentavis and its family may have been well suited for hunting, but were also equipped for scavenging as well. It's not known if it would swoop down and pin small prey with its talons, but it's even been suggested that with its more powerful legs, it could have landed and then run down prey over a short distance, or even spent a great deal of time on the ground. The range of prey it could have taken down may have been quite large as well, as its gape would have allowed it to swallow anything as large as a hare whole. This is of course assuming it didn't go after larger prey, which is entirely possible as modern golden eagles can take down mountain goats, and wedgetail eagles have been known to hunt fully grown kangaroos. But while most teratons were similar in size, or slightly larger than living condors, Argentavis was so massive it could have often been the largest animal at any source of carrion, and have efficiently bullied most scavengers off a kill with its mere presence, or by intimidating them by simply expanding its massive wings. After all, this was a near pteranodon sized creature. But not all predators would have been as intimidated, as terror birds still lived at the same time as Argentavis. Some of them even got to over 300 kilograms. At the end of the day, we may never know precisely how much it hunted compared to how much it scavenged, but it does seem suited to active hunting, and you don't exactly need to be specialised in scavenging to scavenge. Now it should be obvious, but Argentavis was definitely able to fly, and it is built to soar at high altitudes on thermals. There are marks on the bones that show it had large flight feathers, but it did have weak chest muscles, and so had little strength when it came to flapping its wings. If you've ever seen condors take off, they really don't need much of a run up, all that many flaps of their wings to take off. If at a high elevation, Argentavis would likely just need to fall and spread its wings out to begin gliding, but taking off of the ground may have required a run up while spreading its wings out and performing a few quick flaps to get airborne, much like how albatrosses often need to do so if there isn't strong enough winds to assist them. Fortunately, the climate at the time was hotter and drier, and the Andes Mountains were well developed even back then, which would have provided ample warm updrafts to aid the massive bird in getting airborne. Its size likely meant that it had small clutches of eggs, maybe only having one or two offspring at a time, which based on condors could have needed rearing for 16 months or more, meaning mated pairs could only breed at most every two years. On top of that, it could have taken over 12 years for these birds to become sexually mature. This wouldn't have affected the species too greatly, as their large size meant they had few predators, but with changing climates that happened at the end of the Miocene, and saw many of the large animals they relied upon disappearing, the largest of the Teratorns couldn't adapt quickly enough and became extinct. Other species would continue in both Cuba and North America, including Teratornis miramai, known from over 100 individuals found in the famous La Bre tar pits. It had a wingspan around 3.5 meters and lived by scavenging on various megafauna from mammoths to ground sloths, and only became extinct around 10,000 years ago, which is also the time that many other megafauna species became extinct. We may have lost the Teratorns, but their close relatives still live today, However, we nearly lost Californian condors only a few decades ago. There were only 23 of them left in 1983, but fortunately thanks to a successful captive breeding program, there are now around 500 of them, with 345 being in the wild. So they still need help, but thus far their recovery and reintroduction has been very successful. But what do you think of Argentavis? And its family, the Teratorns? So for my question of the week, do you see Argentavis as a more active hunter, or as a sort of super-sized scavenger? What lesser known extinct bird would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.